Project Azorian was a top-secret CIA mission to recover the wreck of sunken Soviet nuclear missile submarine K-129 in 1974. In April 1968, Soviet Pacific Fleet surface and air assets were observed conducting a surge deployment to the North Pacific Ocean that involved some unusual search operations. The activity was evaluated by the United States Office of Naval Intelligence as a possible reaction to the loss of a Soviet submarine. Soviet surface ship searches were centered on a location known to be associated with Soviet Gulf II-class strategic ballistic missile diesel submarine patrol routes. These submarines carried three nuclear missiles in an extended conning tower and routinely deployed to within missile range of the U.S. West Coast. After weeks of searching, the Soviets were unable to locate their sunken boat, and Soviet Pacific Fleet operations gradually returned to a normal level. The American SOSIS hydrophone network in the Northern Pacific was tasked with reviewing its recordings in the hope of detecting an implosion, or explosion, related to such a loss. The Navy analyzed acoustic data from four AFTAC sites and the 8AC Alaska SOSIS array, locating the wreck of the submarine to within 5 nautical miles. The site was hundreds of miles away from where the Soviet Navy had been searching. In July 1968, the United States Navy initiated Operation Sand Dollar with the deployment of USS Halibut from Pearl Harbor to the wreck site. Sand Dollar's objective was to find and photograph K-129. In 1965, Halibut had been configured to use deep submergence search equipment, the only such specially equipped submarine then in the U.S. inventory. Halibut located the wreck after three weeks of visual search using robotic remote-controlled cameras. Halibut is reported to have spent the next several weeks taking over 20,000 close-up photos of every aspect of the K-129 wreck, a feat for which Halibut received a special classified presidential unit citation signed by Lyndon B. Johnson in 1968. In 1970, based upon this photography, Defense Secretary Melvin Laird and Henry Kissinger, then National Security Advisor, proposed a clandestine plan to recover the wreckage so that the U.S. could study Soviet nuclear missile technology as well as possibly recover cryptographic materials. The proposal was accepted by President Richard Nixon and the CIA was tasked to attempt the recovery. Global Marine Development Incorporated, the research and development arm of Global Marine Incorporated, a pioneer in deepwater offshore drilling operations, was contracted to design, build, and operate Hughes Glomar Explorer in order to secretly salvage the sunken Soviet submarine from the ocean floor. The ship was built at the Sun Shipbuilding Yard near Philadelphia. Billionaire businessman Howard Hughes, whose companies were already contractors on numerous classified U.S. military weapons, aircraft and satellite contracts, agreed to lend his name to the project in order to support the cover story that the ship was mining manganese nodules from the ocean floor, but Hughes and his companies had no actual involvement in the project. K-129 was photographed at a depth of over 16,000 feet, and thus the salvage operation would be well beyond the depth of any ship salvage operation ever before attempted. On November 1, 1972, work began on the 63,000 short ton, 619 foot long Hughes Glomar Explorer. Hughes Glomar Explorer employed a large mechanical claw, which Lockheed officially titled the capture vehicle but affectionately called Clementine. The capture vehicle was designed to be lowered to the ocean floor, grasp the targeted submarine section, and then lift that section into the ship's hold. One requirement of this technology was to keep the floating base stable and in position over a fixed point 16,000 feet below the ocean surface. The capture vehicle was lowered and raised on a pipe string similar to those used on oil drilling rigs. Section by section, pairs of 30-foot steel pipes were strung together to lower the claw through a hole in the middle of the ship. This configuration was designed by Western Gear Corporation of Everett, Washington. Upon a successful capture by the claw, the lift reversed the process, 60-foot pairs drawn up and removed one at a time. The salvaged target object was thus to be drawn into a moon pool, the doors of which could then be closed to form a floor for the salvage section. This allowed for the entire salvage process to take place underwater, away from the view of other ships, aircraft, or spy satellites. Sailing 3,000 nautical miles from Long Beach, California, on June 20, 1974, Hughes Glomar Explorer arrived at the recovery site July 4 and conducted salvage operations for over a month. During this period, at least two Soviet Navy ships visited Hughes Glomar Explorer's work site, the ocean-going tugboat SB-10, and the Soviet missile range instrumentation ship Chasma.
It was found out after 1991 that the Soviets were tipped off about the mission and were aware that the CIA was planning some kind of salvage operation, but the military command believed it impossible that they could perform such a task and disregarded further intelligence warnings. Later on, Soviet Ambassador Anatoly Dobrynin started sending urgent messages back to the Soviet Navy warning that an operation was imminent. Soviet military engineering experts re-evaluated their positions and claimed that it was indeed possible, though highly unlikely, to recover K-129, and ships in the area were ordered to report any unusual activity, although the lack of knowledge as to where K-129 was located impeded their ability to stop any salvage operation. U.S. Army Major General Roland LaJoy stated that, According to a briefing he received by the CIA during recovery operations, Clementine suffered a catastrophic failure, causing two-thirds of the already raised portion of K-129 to sink back to the ocean floor. Former Lockheed and Hughes Global Marine employees who worked on the operation have stated that several of the claws intended to grab the submarine fractured, possibly because they were manufactured from merging steel, which is very strong, but not very ductile compared with other kinds of steel. The recovered section included two nuclear torpedoes, and thus Project Azorian was not a complete failure. The bodies of six crewmen were also recovered, and were given a memorial service and with military honors, buried at sea in a metal casket because of radioactivity concerns. Other crew members have reported that code books and other materials of apparent interest to CIA employees aboard the vessel were recovered, and images of inventory printouts exhibited in the documentary 9, suggest that various submarine components, such as hatch covers, instruments and sonar equipment were also recovered. White's documentary also states that the ship's bell from K-129 was recovered, and was subsequently returned to the Soviet Union as part of a diplomatic effort. The CIA considered that the project was one of the greatest intelligence coups of the Cold War. This is Commander Matthews, Intelligence Specialist with Roadblocks Defense Channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching.